Mr. Steve Rising. Yes. Is the name that you've given to the occasional segment wherein we discuss my my work life post bookstore, and I love that title. So I've got some big news. Uh, very excited about this. I had a follow up meeting with a nonprofit organization in Norman, and it went really well. And uh, after it, it went so well that that at the near the end of the meeting, I I I filled in a w9 nice that's that's how good this meeting went <clears throat> there were there were some scary oh, parts nice. there there was a part in the in the meeting with the head of the entire nonprofit that that the guy who's really nice he said uh you know i like to to get to know all of the people that i work with you get to know them personally so so I Googled you, and immediately I started getting a heart attack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he said, uh, so what can you tell me about this podcast of yours? And that's when I died. Yeah. For about two seconds. And then I came back, and I told him all about it. And he said that, oh, I, I, I listened to a few tracks of yours, and uh, it's pretty good. It, 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 you say... That it's an offensive podcast, but I saw nothing bad there, nothing to be uh, concerned about. So he, he, did, he only glanced. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's 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 what I figured there. But he he, I, I was worried because it's like, oh god, please stop digging. Yeah, but but yeah, he said uh, the only the only thing that I had a problem with was on your Facebook page, and I thought, Wait, what are what have you uncovered, you know? But yeah. but he said, uh, yeah, I noticed that in your bio on your uh, personal Facebook page, it says that you're a cult leader. Can you can you help me understand that? And I'm like, oh my god, you don't <laughs> know that. You don't know any of that. Let me. Let, so I told him about the Church of Edwood and all of that, and he had no problems there. And it, so I got a W nine, and and yeah, so we're all good. I, I nice. Am, I, I can and and they've announced it. It's out there. I I can now officially announce that uh, I am working with a nonprofit organization in Norman, Oklahoma. They're a, a leadership group for young kids, and the 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 cheesy bit of tagline that I came up with it is that basically they try and get the children of today and make them into the leaders of tomorrow. Oh God! That's that's the sort of tagline that I came up with. It's an after-school program, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen. Uh, for I, I was given a tour of their headquarters, and it's really big and it's really nice. And afterwards, you know, I was sitting in a meeting waiting to talk to the head of the organization, and the woman who gave me the tour said, "Can I get you anything? A water, a coffee, some chili?" And I said, "No, <laughs> I'm good, but..." Can you rewind a second and explain to me why chili was an option? Because I'm a bit confused by that. And, and what they do is they like to pair kids who are into various things. They like to pair these kids up with professionals in that field. Yeah. So say like you're a seven-year-old and you like cooking. Oh, well, great. We have this area just where you can cook and experiment with food and learn to cook. And, hey, look who we have here today. It's a professional cook from town, and he's going to be working with you to try and help you become better cooks. And he, they have, they also have, like, a, a video production f facility, if you want to get into that, or computer-generated special effects or things like that. Yeah. He, if you really like uh, video games, they can they will pair you up with local people from the city or nearby cities who create video games. And it's a really interesting organization yeah. like that. And a few years ago, some of the kids in the group were uh, in the cooking group specifically. They came up with a pretty good chili recipe and they they tried it out and everybody liked it. So they started selling it at the local farmer's market. And after selling out repeatedly, they decided to take it a step further. And long story short, uh, this organization sells chili in a number of restaurants throughout in a number of supermarkets throughout the state. Nice. Yeah. Really, really, it's the sort of organization that I wish I had when I was a child. Yeah. You know, 
when I was growing up, like fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and high school age, that's this sort of thing. There are buses that will come to the local schools in Norman and pick these kids up and bring them there. And once they go in through the doors, here's a big, huge kitchen, and there's a bunch of food, and they can eat as much food as they want. They can go to their different areas of expertise or or, or just read and, and hang out. It's an amazing organization, but they don't do a lot with younger kids because here are all these kids, and they're in fifth grade and sixth grade and eighth grade and tenth grade. Yeah. But there's nothing for the smaller kids. And they were hoping to slowly start building uh, their organization for these younger kids. But who could they get who's really good with younger children that can help bring these younger children in? Perhaps someone who's really great with kids and has long hair and a handsome mustache and who <laughs> recently has a lot of free time on his hands. Yes. So, so yeah, I, I'm doing, I'm doing story times for them and their leadership themed story times. And I think I've got a good angle with that. They, they, they wanted me to, how can we get Mr. Steve's great story times and, and turn them into a leadership sort of story time? So I came up with, with near the ending, always doing these, okay, it's leadership corner kids. They tapped me to work for this organization because I'm a good leader and I'm going to be teaching you kids how to be a good leader. Being a good leader is all about being responsible. That's why I'm going to be teaching you how to juggle chainsaws. <laughs> Everybody check under your chairs. You should all have five chainsaws. <laughs> oh, wait, there's no chainsaws under there? Oh, I'm sorry. That's my bad. Wow, was that responsible of me? <laughs> so that's, that's, that's my... And then each each month, each story time, I'll have a different bad leadership thing yeah. you know that's that's my in so i'm really excited about that and i'm getting paid a decent amount and i'm doing story time right now i'm doing story time the last saturday of every month at their location the thing is huge it's basically like a their staging area yeah. is basically like a really really nice modern church Really? Okay. You know, I've got like a stage and lights and it, it, it's really <laughs> impressive. It, yeah. When I, when I, when I, when I, and, and I got the okay to stream each story time live. So I'm going to nice. be streaming them on my YouTube page and it's going to look real classy. I'm really excited about that. It's going to look real good. Cool. It's going to be real professional. And just, just finally being able to, to confirm this and being able to tell people because they have, ad people and graphics people and and they were trying to get the verbiage right and trying to get this and that right and should we put this picture in maybe not we'll wait and they were they're coming up with ads and adverts and shirts and all this sort of thing to promote it they're really going going nuts on the promotion level yeah. so it took a while for them to finally finalize everything and it was difficult because they said they were going to that i would be able to announce it at the end of last week, but no, we'll, we'll, we'll announce it on Monday, but wait, let's say we need to have a second meeting. And then that meeting got bumped, but okay, probably definitely Wednesday, no later than Wednesday. And next thing you know, it's my birthday and I'm driving around, wandering around Austin, Texas, and they still haven't, you know, allowed me to announce it. Yeah. And it's just, oh, man, this is, like, this is taking forever. When are we finally going to get there? And then, like, halfway through my birthday is is when, they, you know, everything dropped. Yeah. And so, so, yeah, so that was a nice little birthday present for me. So it's official, and I'm doing story times, and I'm very excited. And uh, everybody should go check that out. Plus, I, I have a Patreon now. You do. I was I was yeah. wondering about that. Yeah. Yeah. I have oh, a you, Patreon. You mentioned and, it before, actually. Yeah. And you know how many people I have on my Patreon? How many? A whopping three. Wow. I'm really proud of my three patrons, but I don't like I don't like the name patron, so I've been kind of tossing it up. Uh, Patroniuses. Patroniuses. Not bad. Uh, Patreonites. Patreonites. Patriots. Uh, uh, Patronians, uh, P Patronia Knights. Yeah. You know, I've been trying to toss it up a little bit, so I'm really excited about that. 
So, so that's Mr. Steve Rising. Once I was able to announce that I've teamed up with this nonprofit, I, I just felt so much better, you know? Yes. That is, that is very, very cool. Yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, uh, but uh, along with that, one thing that I was thinking is, I, I think you should find, besides the podcast, I think you should find a way to do more adult content. Well, uh, I, I, I'm let me give you, more... let me give you, let me give you my reasons why. Okay. 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 <clears throat> You want the adults to be able to see you as a human being. Yeah. You know? And that yeah. you're not really Mr. Steve. So that if anything comes up, and it will, mm -hmm. it's like, well, okay, that's that's no real surprise here. Yeah. You know, that there might be a couple of he might be friends with a couple of cam girls, you know. No yeah. surprise there. He's oh, a I, I, adult. He's I a, he's... ever, 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 ever since I was uh, I was uh, let go from the 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 store that will not be named. I went through my Instagram, my Twitter, my everything, and took out anyone or anything that anyone might find. Uh, to be offensive or dirty. I, I did a sweep and it took me like two weeks because <laughs> I was following so many, so much stuff like that. Yeah. It took a real long time, but, but no, I, I, I definitely can see something like that happening. But, but at the same time, you're entitled to be you, even if you yeah. are a child entertainer. Yeah. You know, it's difficult. So, you need to be you right out of the box and like kind of establish this, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I'm really putting it right. Like, Hey, maybe get all the parents listening to the podcast. I mean, that certainly shows another side of you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But now for well, me, cause I'm going to piggyback off of you. Go ahead. Uh, well, one of the things that, that, Right now, I have these, you know, different tiers on on Patreon. I've got these different tiers, yeah. and mm -hmm. I, I've got one. I've got one person signed up for tier number one, and then I've got two people signed up for tier number two. But in some of the higher up tiers of my Patreon page, I do have, you know, all these different things you can receive, and one of them is. Uh, people in this tier, like tier three or tier four or something, get access to exclusive adult-only story times. Oh, nice, 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 nice. That was, yeah. yeah, that was something that my wife came up with, and we've already got a number of books lined up. We just haven't done, we just haven't gotten any pa patrons in that tier yet. Yeah, and I am hoping, you know, I'm still working on it, I'm hoping to get you some cartoons that can go in those tiers someplace too. That would be awesome. Uh, I am I am getting closer. I'm getting a lot closer. Uh, it just turns out that it turns out that there were things that I didn't know I didn't know, and now yeah. I have to I have to get those worked out, and things are looking really good. Um, I here is kind of my plan for myself. And that's why I said I'm just going to piggyback yeah. off of you. Uh, and, that's fine. And Tasha does have a bit of responsibility here, uh, as well as Jeannie. Um, I am going to, sometime this weekend, pull together all of my old, old footage and stuff like that, and different things I've done, and put together a reel and see if I can't pick up some editing jobs. Okay. Cool. That'd be awesome. I, I could work at home, so I'm not going to panic. And yeah. I can edit like a motherfucker. You know, yeah. it's it's the it's the one part of all the things I could do that I, I would feel confident in being like, yeah, I, 
I need 500 an episode, sure. You know? Yeah. So I'm going to be cool. working on that. Yeah. And and commercials are coming. Commercials are going to be the first step. Then cartoons and, you know, things like that. But the commercials are coming, but it's taking a while. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. And that's that's Sweet. about it. Good. 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 You know, I you know, I no uh, the cartoons, no no rush on that, you know. Oh, no. Like I don't want to there's no pressure there. I don't want to rush you. You know, I I don't want to I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? Oh yeah, totally. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just no, sure. I this is this is my thing, and I'm just updating you on it. That's all. Okay, good. I, I I I preface it like that just because it feels like I just keep talking about it. Yeah. You know? Okay. And our listeners, oh well, he's just talking shit again. You know. Yeah. Because I yeah. because nothing has come out in a while, but this is definitely going to be better than Albert B. Fall. Yay. Uh, and and my my goal, what I must do before I die, is put out a feature length cartoon that's better than Leo the Lion or Food Fight. Yes, it should be achievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would imagine. Well, good. I am rooting for you, sir. Thank you. No problem. And you are doing awesome. Thank you. And, and finally, Bunny, before we end Act 1 of the podcast, I just wanted to talk about uh, my week. Because the whole family went on an old-fashioned road trip. Yes. And that is a and, present that I've wanted for a long-ass time. And, I spent most of my childhood doing road trips, just going from, from Phoenix to Tucson, from Tucson to Douglas, Arizona, right on the border. Sometimes just hopping the border, going to Mexico going from Phoenix to Flagstaff, Phoenix to Sedona. And sometimes we would go on vacations, you know, to, to my parents always liked going to San Diego and I still have no idea why, because there didn't seem to be anything to do. We would spend most of the day just at the beach and I, and, and that was it. And I'm like, yeah. is this all that we're going to do? We're just going to get breakfast, go to the beach and then go back to the hotel. Like that's, that's, that that doesn't seem like a vacation to me. You need to do more. I'm confused. Yeah, we would go on vacation. We we'd go to we Phoenix to Las Vegas, Phoenix to Los Angeles, Phoenix to San Francisco. We 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 did a lot of driving, and I wanted my kids to experience that. And Emerald went, and and Amber went. Amber was going to visit family, but then. That fell through because her family sucks. Yes. So, and then Bella didn't want to go, and I understand that because it's a you're gonna be it's a road trip. You're gonna be in the back seat and surrounded by everybody. Like I understand that, but also family road trip. So we all went. Yeah. And really, we haven't. We probably haven't done a, a real road trip since we moved from Sacramento and then to Oklahoma. Because I, and I, and my wife doesn't consider that a road trip, but I consider it a road trip because we went from Sacramento to uh, Phoenix, and then we spent like a week with my family, and then we went to Oklahoma. So I consider that kind of a road trip. But yeah. personally, I can't talk for my teens and my tween because they're a complete and total mm. mystery to me. But I had a fucking blast. Good. This road trip. So much fun, except for the Austin poop emergency. The Austin Poop Emergency. That sounds yeah. like a tween book. Yeah. No, that's an amazing band. Yeah. You ever saw the Austin Poop Emergency? They're incredible. <laughs> uh, free band name of the week, Austin Poop Emergency. We were at a Target, and uh, Eleanor oh, decided God. to do like... I remember. She decided to poop five times at once. Okay. And, I, and I'm changing her, and then suddenly, like, like, like... Honey, it's a poop emergency. I need your help. Like, it was bad. It was really bad. <laughs> but we wanted to spend a day or two or two and a half days in Austin. But we also, but also Austin is Austin. So we ended up 
<clears throat> we ended up at a at a hotel at a place called Dripping Springs, which is like a half hour. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I, apparently it's a place. Yeah. It, the way that I saw Dripping Springs was that it was Scottsdale, Arizona, if they had room. If they so, had room so for like you go to Scottsdale and it's super rich and it's super well off and everyone everyone has a lot of money, but also it's Arizona, so there's no room. So everyone's just kind of like scrunched together and all the buildings are scrunched together. But but so imagine Scottsdale, but if they had all the space in the world. So that was basically dripping springs, because here's this big huge house and then space. And then here's this really expensive restaurant. Here's this Space. really expensive house on, the, on yeah. a hill. Yeah, here's a big, huge, expensive house on a hill. But it's not immediately crowded by, like, hundreds of other houses. There's room. There was just room. Yeah. It was really nice. We we ended up staying at this hotel that I, I've never heard of them before. But we stayed at a hotel called Sleep. Sleep? Yeah, Sleep Inn and Suites. And it's like, okay, I've never heard of you before, but oh my god, the greatest pillows. Oh my god, no, in the I can't world. Stand those pillows. You didn't like the pillows? Oh, I just, I you sunk, sunk right into, into, them. into them. Yeah, exactly. you sunk into the pillows. I didn't like it. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh-uh. Loved those pillows. <laughs> but but Natasha had always wanted to go to Austin because outside of Austin is Dripping Springs, and in Dripping Springs is the fairly new uh brewery owned by one of the guys from supernatural oh right 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 yeah yeah so so and then i always wanted to go to austin because i've always austin is one of those places where i've always had a list of things i wanted to go see so she said let's just your birthday's coming up and your birthday is on spring break so fuck it let's just do two things with one stone so we got there late uh, the day before my birthday, and we went to the hotel. We went to the pool, and it, we were excited because there was an indoor pool. But apparently, it, the website didn't say that it wasn't heated, uh-huh. and so it was the coldest pool in the world. It was fun. Uh, Bella being crazy, she she got in and started swimming, and then uh, almost nobody else did. Amber went in a little bit. Yeah. But, and that was it. Yeah, and then that was it. But I then I felt bad that. because we're there, and and you know I, I I felt like I needed to get in the pool, so I jumped in. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then immediately got out because it was fucking freezing. But <laughs> and then we just we went back to the hotel. We went back to the room. We got we got a uh, Domino's pizza, which was the only food place nearby. And we watched TV. They were showing Rick and Morty, and we were having a good old time. And then the next day, which was my birthday, I I went to one of the places I've been wanting to go to for forever, the Museum of the Weird. Yes. Oh my God, I'm mistaken. And it was it was just this it was just this kind of like gift shop. But then there was this special room in the back, and if you paid admission, you went into it, it, suddenly the the little gift shop you were at became this maze of corridors and bizarre things and there were there were like a it it was kind of like a mini ripley's believe it or not oh here is the body of a fiji mermaid here are some shrunken heads here's a history of 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 the the haunted houses of austin texas here's uh some wax figures here here is uh the corpse of a two-headed calf stuff like that we're going through all these different areas and it not everybody wanted to go, so Natasha didn't go, and Emerald didn't go, and Eleanor didn't go, because there's no way that Emerald could go. I was a bit iffy as to whether Maxwell should go. Yeah. Because I had heard some things that went on there, but but finally we just like, said, what? yeah, Maxwell... <laughs> mean, but meanwhile, Maxwell's there going, I'm okay, I'm brave, I never get scared, I'm so excited, I want to go with you, and I'm like, okay, fuck it, we'll take uh, Maxwell. So so we're going on the tour by ourselves and we're going through the halls. I'm taking a bajillion pictures. Yeah, so it was me, Maxwell, Bella, and Amber who went through the Museum of the Weird. And we're going through there and we're checking out the scary stuff. Then all of a sudden we hear this guy in the back saying, hey, a tour's about to start. So we go with this guy and he takes us through the, the, the Museum of the Weird. And there was a, there was a section just for wax figures of uh famous horror movie characters and and uh-huh. i'm like oh that's a metaloon hey that's frankenstein 
Bella! And Bella's like, what? And I'm like, no, nothing. I'm taking a picture of Dracula. So I'm taking a picture of Dracula. <laughs> and, and, oh, and, and there was the one guy with no arms and legs from Freaks. Oh, yeah? And I, and I geeked out over the That's Freaks! That's Freaks! Hey, that's the creature from the Black Lagoon the, uh, podcast. So so he, then... He should be uh, animatronic. The guy told us this story. He, he should be animatronic yeah, to roll a I, cigarette. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. We haven't gotten we haven't gotten to the monster yet, Maxwell. We haven't gotten to the monster yet. Eventually, we're in a corridor, like an outside corridor. And the guy tells us a story. And it's a 100 percent true story. When a very young 20 something Johnny Depp was filming What's Eating Gilbert Grape in Austin, Texas. He fell in love with Austin so much that he didn't want to just stay at a hotel. He wanted to live there. So he rented a room behind the the gift shop that later became the museum of the weird and and so many people have tried to go in there that they had to like what's they had to put bars on the doors and like a lock yeah yeah it it was like the tiniest little room but you know 22 year old johnny depp didn't give a fuck he just wanted to have a place in austin so he rented this tiny room was he short like why was the freaking I don't know, but 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 anyway, I touched the door to the apartment that Johnny Depp had. Nice. And I have a picture of it. That meant uh, a lot to me. You touch the doorknob. And yeah. Stand. No, I didn't touch the doorknob. I wanted to touch the wood, Bella. The wood that Johnny Depp touched. It, it, it was kind of <laughs> like a religious thing for me. So anyway, finally, we're going through this maze and stuff. Eventually, we get to this door... And it specifically says that from this point on, no cameras are allowed, no photographs, no videos, nothing's allowed. And apparently inside that room, they had uh, what is commonly referred to as the Minnesota Iceman. The Minnesota Iceman. It is considered, yeah, it is considered to be a caveman that was frozen in ice and so his body is still uh his body is still you can see the teeth you can see the eyes you can see the skin and the hair and all of that sort of thing it, and, and it, 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 it many people it was it's still frozen and many people consider it a, a missing link it yeah. was in an episode of storage wars it was in an episode of Cake Boss. They made a movie about it, uh, ba- really? loosely based on it, called Iceman, and Timothy Hutton was in it. Yeah. And, and it, it has big, rich history. Afterwards, when I'm trying to tell Natasha about it, I Google Minnesota Iceman. And, uh, yeah, there's a there was a huge article about it in, uh, like, smithsonian.com. Yeah? Yeah, it was a big, Minnesota. huge cryptozoological thing. But And so we're walking, and we see it. We're not allowed to take pictures of it, but we look at it, and it's really impressive, and you can see, like, the hand and stuff and, and all that. But then we are led to bleachers, and we sit down there, and it turns out the guy who's doing our tour also does sideshows. Oh, nice. And, oh, my God. Maxwell may have been scarred for life. Yeah. At first, at first, the at first the guy was playing this like weird guitar harp hybrid. No, it was like and, a violin. Yeah, like a violin harp thing, and that was really pretty. And then hardly anybody clapped for that. But then after that, he was going to drill a nail into his nose. Oh yeah, 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 geek tricks. Yeah, but then he decided not to do that, and he got a giant ass drill. Yes. And he drilled that into his nose, and then that was impressive. We're all clapping. but but And he did a bunch of things like that. I, he, he also uh, turned off a propane torch with his tongue. Nice. That was impressive. But the amazing thing is, the amazing thing was, uh, and, and I'm really proud to say this, uh, the guy did one of those things where he, he gets a, you know, like a balloon animal balloon. It's really long. And uh-huh. he snorts it in his mouth, and then it it he horks it out of his. It, he he sn- snorts it into his nose, and he horks it out of his mouth, and he starts flossing with it, right? <laughs> okay. And then that alone is freaking out people, but then he gets out 
the balloon pump. Uh huh. And while it's still going through his nose and out of his mouth, he blows it up to full. Yes. He he blows it up to full all the way. balooniness. Yes. Yeah. And then he pulls it out of his nose and through his mouth and then uh, it does a balloon animal in the shape of a doggy. And he says, uh, so does anybody want to take this home? Immediately, Maxwell shoots his hand up. <laughs> and the guy's like, I'm sorry, little human. Does anyone uh, 18 years or older want to take this home? And immediately I shoot my hand up. <laughs> So anyway, I have a balloon animal on my uh, bookshelf. Yes. Which was in a man's skull. <laughs> and I am really proud of that. I, I would be too. I've always wanted a pickle pump. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite impressive. And then we went to a bunch of other places. We went to this uh, vintage toy store called Toy Joy. Yeah. And they actually had a number of Ultraman action figures, which I thought was weird. Yeah. And then, and then we went to oh, we went to an arcade called Pinballs, and I, I and I, I left my heart there. That was so nice. And then we, and then we, oh yeah, uh, we. So at first, mommy was playing skee ball because she's addicted to skee ball. She's yeah. just one hundred percent addicted to skee ball, and her, she's getting her and God, and yeah, yeah. And she's she's addicted to tickets. She's got a lot of tickets. And then uh, suddenly, so then they're like, oh, we should get more tickets. So they go to that machine where you drop a, a token in, and it's there's a there's like a there's like a thing that pushes the coins, and if any coins fall off the edge, then you get tickets for those coins. Well, Emerald realized that um, all of the employees there didn't give a fuck if you hit the machine really, really hard and caused a shit ton of coins to fall down. <laughs> nice. Directly? So what I'm trying to say is we got over a thousand tickets. Nice. Just because of the machine. Yeah. Be, well, because of, because of, um, the Emerald, em Emerald and Amber cheating. Yeah. So that was fun. So everybody got something. So that was, that was a bunch of fun. So we, we, we had a really fun trip. We got home late last night. Yeah. But then we stayed up late drinking uh, Jensen Ackles' alcohol <laughs> and playing various games. We played. We went to a Target and they were having this game sale, so we got all these games. So, so some some people were playing Life, and then we all played. Uh, we all played Life. Some people were playing uh, Battleship, and then I went to bed, and everybody stayed up and played. Uh, what's it? What's it called? Uh, Cards Against, Against Humanity. Humanity. Oh, I've heard of that. I've, I I don't know how it goes exactly. Yeah, no, it's it's really really fun. Uh, I at the store that will remain nameless, we weren't able to carry Cards Against Humanity, but so we had a a knockoff called Crabs Adjust Humidity. <laughs> That's a one hundred percent true story. So I got a pack of Crabs Adjust Humidity, and there were some blank cards that you could write your own thing. I love it! So, uh, so you are actually a number of answers, Bunny, in Crabs Adjust Humidity. Oh my god, yes! Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think one, one, is a, a, one answer is Bunny's musky facial hair. Yeah. <laughs> and I think another one was Bunny's top hat. Yeah. So basically, like, there are question cards, and then you use the vaguely offensive answer cards to answer them. So, so they're vaguely offensive questions and vaguely offensive answers, and whoever wins is the person who has the best answer. So one question will be, I can only get an erection now if I use blank, and then you use your uh, Bunny Williams' top hat card. Yeah. And then hopefully that'll win. Like, uh, what, what does grandma find funny? What does grandma find funny? And you can, like, let's, you can put down dead babies. Yeah. Or the Holocaust. Or Bunny Williams' <laughs> stop at. Yeah. Depending on which card you, you know have. what happened last night? They, they, they drew a card that literally said, what does, what does Nana find funny? And they had a card. 
that literally said dying, forgetting to eat and dying because of it. And they put that down. Nice. That, that was freaking... People are jerks, man. Yeah, that's the whole game. The whole game is just people are jerks. So we had a really fun trip, and, and we're still all kind of exhausted about it. And I think the main takeaway from this trip is that uh, my wife has a small bladder. Yes. And that she is addicted to ski ball. That's what I have learned on this trip. Addicted to ski ball. I find that. Yeah. Uh, I find that a nice surprise. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. 